we hope to get through today. We probably won't finish, but we're going to go through the question answers that we had last week. And then we're going to continue information processing. We're going to look at documents used for information processing, data entry errors, and we're going to try to start methods of validation and verification of data. Okay? So let's get through the answers. Did you do the questions from last week? I didn't really get time to finish them. That's fine. Oh. You think you would be able to answer this first one? Probably. Um, uh, data is the row of facts and figures, and information is the processed data. Exactly. So, data would be unprocessed facts, raw unprocessed facts, has no meaning. Well, information is processed data and has meaning. What about the next one? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, information processing is the use of computers to process data and turn it into information. You remember the four stages of information processing? That should be input processing, output, and storage. Exactly. Good job. And any three administrative tasks involved in commercial data processing? There's, I think, ten that I gave you to choose from. Um, making budgets, security, and uh, sale transactions. Mm -hmm. Anything on here? It would be good to remember most, if not all, of these, but once you get the basic idea of commercial data processing down, you'll be able to say if something is commercial data processing. So then the next question, Let's then explain two main types of control systems. I'm not sure about that one. Okay, so first we have automation systems, which follow a set of predetermined instructions to the end of a task. And we have process control systems, which constantly update their course of action based on input they receive from sensors. Okay. Then explain the purpose of scientific data processing. Um, I'm not sure about that one. Okay. Well, how to say it? Well, scientific data processing is the use of computers to collect data during experiments, which will be used to make connections and observations to aid the experimental process. So short in that, I would take scientific data processing as the use of computers to collect data to aid the experimental process in short form. Okay. And the last one lists four characteristics of data that would ensure information retrieval is efficient. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I didn't go through this part properly. Data should be accurate, up to date, 
structured in a way that makes searching for specific information possible and stored in a suitable storage medium. Okay? Was there anything unclear? No, it makes sense. Just need to go through it myself to like remember properly. Okay. Well, I still think you did a great job. So here's some virtual stickers for you. And then we can move in to what we're doing today. So first we're going to look at documents used for information processing. We have source documents, human readable documents, machine readable documents, and turnaround documents. First, we're going to get into source documents. Now, a source document is a document, obviously, that contains data that is going to be input into a computer system. So once the data has been entered, it should be filed away safely because the data might have to be checked over later. So you don't just throw away the source document. You should keep it in a safe place so that if you have to check it later, you can. Okay? Is that clear? Yeah, that makes sense. Alrighty, so I'll give you a minute to copy that. Just let me know when you've finished. You can go ahead. Alrighty. So next we're going to look at human readable documents. Now a human readable document is any document that needs to be read by a human. It's right there in the name. So an example of this would be forms that are filled out in pen or pencil and has to be read before the data is entered into the computer. So if you got a form where you had to put in your name or your address or whatever, those things can actually be read by a machine or a computer. So a human would have to read that, okay? So I'll give you a minute to copy that again. You can go ahead now. Okay. Then we're going to look at machine readable documents. Now, a machine readable document is a document which can be read by an input device like a scanner or mark reader directly into a computer system. Examples of machine readable documents would include multiple choice answer sheets and barcodes on items at the supermarket. Have you ever done an exam with CXE, like CCSLC or anything like that? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, when you get a multiple choice paper for CXC, they give you an answer sheet that already has your name printed on it. And what you do is you just shade in your choice, right? So they do this because they don't want to hire people to correct each individual multiple choice paper, right? So what they do is they feed a stack of these answer sheets into a machine a mark reader that would read where you have your choices and that is what would put your answers into the system so that's how that works okay just let me know when i can move on wait wait, wait. you can move on okay so turn around documents now a turnaround document is a document that is printed by a computer system 
but is later used to input new data into the new system. Into the same system, sorry. So an example of this would be a tax return form where the employee's personal information is already printed on it. So the employee would then have to fill out all the rest of the form. And after that happens, the new data is entered so the tax return can be processed. It's okay if you don't understand tax returns yet. <laughs> Neither do I. But that's just the basic idea of it. So basically, it's dinner on documents like um, you have data printed, information printed from the computer and put new data and then that is processed and it becomes the new information. Right, exactly. Used. Okay. I saw Mike just joined. Don't worry, you didn't miss too much. But the recording is going to be posted on YouTube later, okay? So you can go back and catch up on what you missed. Just let me know when you finish copying. You can move on now. All right. So then, any questions so far? Is anything unclear? No, I do not have any questions. All right. So then we can move on to data entry errors. First, we have typographical errors. These are typing errors that are made when the wrong key is pressed on a keyboard. So they're more commonly known as typos. That's what we know as typos. Then we have transposition errors. These occur when numbers and characters are entered in the wrong order. So for example, if you meant to enter 2345, but instead you enter 2354. Okay? So typographical errors are only with like letter keys? Um, no, not just with letter keys. Anything that is on the keyboard. If you type the wrong key, that's a typographical error. So typographical errors um, include transposition errors? Yes. There is some overlap there.
but typographical er typographical errors more have to do with the keyboard transposition errors would more have to do with the person entering the data You can move on now. Alrighty. So then we're going to look at validation versus verification. First up, data validation is the computerized checking of input data for errors before it is processed. That's an important part. Validation happens before the data mm -hmm. is processed. Examples of the, uh, these errors would include data being unreasonable or incomplete. We're going to talk about how to check for those later. Data verification, on the other hand, is the checking of data for mistakes after it has been processed. Okay, validation before, verification after. So examples of this would be transcription errors when data is copied from one medium or device to another. As it says, a transcription error is just an error that occurs while data is being copied to a different device. Um, Makiba, if you're um, if you're speaking, we're not hearing you. No, I'm not. Speaking. I'm just seeing like um. Oh, okay. No, I was just, just seeing audio coming from your um, from your Discord now. Right. I was just giving you guys some time to copy this. Actually, there's another point on this. Yeah. Verification checks okay. don't actually check if the data is entered correctly, just that it matches the data from the source. That's an important thing to know as well. I forgot to put that up just now. But if your inform if your data on your source is incorrect, then the data that you enter would be incorrect as well. So verification checks don't actually check if that data is correct. Just that it matches the source. Okay. Okay. Just make sure you write that down. Um, unless I for pronounce your name correct, is it Makiba or my name? Yeah. Right, it's Makiba. Makiba. Okay, yes, okay. Please. So like um Makiba, is it that um 
validation will more be like um checking the formats and seeing whether um like yeah checking like more so like the formats of the information mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff while verification would more be like um trying to prevent transcription errors and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. yes. would that be the difference between like validation or verification or like would yes. that help to guide us in any way yes it will we're actually going to get into methods of validation and verification where we'll talk more about that I'm glad you mentioned format checking because okay, that is okay. one of the, the methods. Okay, so let me know when you finish copying this page and then we can get into that. Does everyone have that? Yeah, I got it. Does everyone else have it? If you're just joining us, don't worry. The recording is going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to methods of validation. So methods of validation include range check, reasonableness check, data type check, consistency check, presence check, format check, length check, and a check digit. There are other types, but these are the ones we're going to be focusing on. Okay, we're going to go through these one by one. First, we're going to look at range check. This ensures that the data entered is within a specified range. So this is only for numeric data. For example, if you're meant to enter a number corresponding to a month, the range of acceptable numbers would be 1 to 12, because there's no 13th month. And there's no negative first month. So you can only enter numbers from 1 to 12. Make sense? Yes, Miss Um, I, I understand. Perfect. All right, just let me know when you guys have finished copying that. Okay, um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correct, but like Felicity or Michael, whoever, like, um, do you guys like taking notes like on a computer or do you like write it down? Like, do you put it on a notepad, an e notepad, or do you like manually write it down? Wow, no response. <laughs> uh, I prefer to uh, write my notes if that helps you. Oh, uh, thank you. Bro, you were saying something? I see, bro. I think it's better writing notes, but I, I don't write notes. Okay. Remember yeah, because, um, yeah. Felicity, you were saying something. So, I'm like, what's your take on it? Oh, I take e notes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You can also just take I think it might down. be Yeah. I think it might be more feasible. Um well 
depending on how your time is though but i think it might be better you know to um to jot it down like on an e-note pad mm-hmm. and then write it on um, then write it in your book now because um writing it in your book might you know might kill um class time a bit especially in you know like a virtual classroom where teacher might try to cover more you know more than they usually would be able to in a normal classroom now. that's completely fine though we have time <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you could type it first since typing is faster than when you go home. Yeah. You write down so you can absorb yeah. more information. But if it's one thing I won't recommend yeah. is you guys taking screenshots because we both know that you're never going to look at those screenshots again. So. <laughs> I, I, I was in that phase as a, at a point in time. I used to take uh, pictures with my phone mm-hmm. and then like out of the hundred, I might only go and revisit two. <laughs> exactly. They stay there in your camera. Yeah, yeah, Never yeah, look yeah. at them again. So do we have this? The informational range check? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, miss. Yes. 